I bought something at 180,000, maybe three weeks ago, peaked at 26.5 million, over 160X. Mm. That doesn't happen in other markets. How are you able to predict the market so accurately? And I think in anything, I think the real secret to success is dedication. If Coinbase hits number one on the app store, exit. Is that where the world is going, where instead of the traditional real estate transaction, now you just are buying an NFT and it's quicker, faster, easier? Because I remember Bored Apes, people were paying maybe millions. Is this not enticing young kids to potentially get scammed? Logan Paul, yeah. this thing called CryptoZoo. Can you explain what that was to the audience a little bit? I have 99% of my funds in crypto. When I say I've dedicated nearly a decade to this market, I, I really did. I think this is the last cycle to actually make a lot of money and like really change your life. All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. This is called PK Out Loud. We finally came up with a name after like 11 podcasts. You're the first guest, technically, right. PK Out Loud. I'm so excited for today's podcast today, guys, because we're joined by Ian Watson, but the public knows you as Cy, yes. which sounds way cooler. And today we're going to be talking about a world that I don't really like, but I'm starting to get to know, which is cryptocurrency. And today what we're going to talk about is meme coins, the rainbow, the pudgy penguins, your story. And how old are you? 25. How a 25-year-old figured out cryptocurrency um, and for those of you guys, just really quick, that have already seen the uh, Ryan Pace in Volio podcast on my channel, you can check it out if you haven't seen it. You're his business partner. Yes. So we've already done a full podcast on Volio. So I'm not going to get into like the nitty gritty details of the business. But mm -hmm. up here, funny enough, this is where I want to start it. I have a closed, here, what, wrong one, short position. Look at this. 100% win rate on closed short-term trading positions which to add a little bit of context Involio is a social media trading application that allows you to share your trades but you cannot delete them so there's it's as legit as it can come and you have not lost a short-term trade and you've sent 79 of those trades i want to start there how the yeah. heck do you do it um well you know it I've been doing this a long time, um, and I, I don't have some secret sauce. You know, I, I think it's I think the secret sauce in any regard of uh, be it crypto stocks, forex, NFTs, whatever market you're trading, it's just sticking with it. it it's getting to know it like the back of your hand. And I, I have spent the better part of a decade um, learning every aspect of this market and playing around in every aspect of this market and testing out what works, what doesn't work. And what works for you in forex might not work for me. What works for me in crypto might not work for you. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, it's, it's imperative to just test things out. And then once you do find something that works, just stick to it and yeah. learn it until you, you feel like you know every aspect of it. So who introduced you to cryptocurrency? I wish I had a really fun story about crypto. But so I had started a Supreme reselling group when I was in high school. Um, Supreme as in like the, the, the clothes? Brand. Yeah. Got and it. sneakers as well. But um, that grew to like 30,000 members. Um, and one of the guys there who was notably, you know, family super 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 family money and he he says his father told him to buy ethereum and he told me about it and i already knew what bitcoin ethereum were just from transfers and such um and i jumped in and got interested he, he, his dad promised to be a thousand dollars by the end of the year and it hit a thousand dollars by the day after New years so that was that was my first jump in okay cool so i want to take just a a little bit of a step towards Involio really quick just to refresh the viewers memories of Involio because Involio is such a cool platform and actually with Ryan, unfortunately, we hadn't had like this set. So I wasn't able to even show the visualizations of what Involio is all about. But, you know, if you can see here on this, this is you, you've got 5,638 followers on Involio. How, how, how many people are on the Involio application now estimated as of today? So we just crossed over 40,000. 40,000. Um, yeah. And wow. we're, we still haven't spent a dollar on marketing. It's just no. entirely been organic. And we're, for the first time, we're really growing quickly now. So we've gone from over the past couple of weeks, 50 to 150 users to today we got 916 and quickly growing what do you mean by that 916 were live on it today like no new time? users new users wow and so every single user has the ability i actually guys have my own little portfolio on here i i, I play i think that this is well built it's easy to follow and you can come on to involio you can go to involio and you can literally search anyone i think if i'm not mistaken i could search my name patrick yes sir yeah Patrick, Kenny, let's see. There I am. And you can pull up a uh, portfolio. So you could see, here's a stock portfolio. Verizon, 
eighteen percent up. CVS break even. Citigroup twenty one percent up. Bank of America fifty three percent up. Airbnb eleven percent negative. NCLH eight percent negative. Which I love so much because I think something people you know respect is transparency. Right. Something we lack in this. This country. this app is forcing it. So mm -hmm. this is going to bring my first topic that I can't wait to talk about. How many quote unquote Instagram stars, gurus, you know who I'm talking about, mm -hmm. these sort of guys, how many of them have joined the platform, first of all, if that is a quantifiable thing. But number two, how many have joined and completely just screwed it up and yeah. then just disappeared and deleted their account? So in most of the conversations we have with these like pre-established creators who are making quarter million dollars a month MRR on their subscriptions, um, they'll say, oh, it sounds super cool. This sounds like we love the, the thought behind it, but then they never post trades. Um, and I think a lot of people are scared of the, the concept of not being able to delete them. And we did have one person come on who I know was charging ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for mentorships, and he just completely blew his account publicly. And, um, you know, I think- Did it ruin his, his business? Um, I wouldn't say it ruined it, but it opened some eyes. Um, Why can't we say the names? <laughs> if you go on, you can find them. Um, oh, they're still on here. Yeah, I mean, we won't delete it, you know. Uh, yeah. If someone, it's all just. Can they perfect. delete an account so it disappears? Or You could delete an account, yeah. So you could delete an account. But if you delete an account, everybody watched you just. Yeah, exactly. You know, and we've seen up. situations like that. We saw a guy recently who wasn't an influencer or anything, just came on, started trading, got liquidated pretty quickly using high leverage and just made a new account. And it's, um, you know, it is what it is. We're, we're working on ways to kind of block that from happening because obviously someone can do that. But yeah, I mean, it's it's the same thing with, like, with Twitter. You can post 100 trades, one does well, delete the 99 bad ones, right. and now you're the man. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, the deeper I've gotten into it, the more people I've talked to, I think honestly probably like 95% of these social influencers like have no idea what they're doing. Or maybe they did at one point, started making money on subscriptions and just gave up on it. Or they look really cool on the internet because they own brokers, but I won't. I won't <laughs> yeah, there's a whole different side. But we can go really deep. <laughs> um, so I want to start. I, I really want to get in because I, I mean, I got a list of questions from people that I said yeah. I was going to deal with you today. Um, but the, the first thing that I want to talk about is just Right now, we're Q1 2024. Bitcoin this morning, I think, hit 47,000. 48. 48, whatever. It's still something. Going. And I've got this. First of all, I got this rainbow chart, which I think is referenced quite a bit between mm -hmm. crypt people and crypto. What is your thoughts on this um, phenomena of this rainbow chart? So stock to flow um, was a bit more of a phenomenon than it is now a couple years ago. It has kind of started to lose its... It's just, but I mean, it's just breaking down the basics of each having and what happens. I mean, Bitcoin isn't isn't all that complex. If you no. increase interest and decrease supply, what happens? Um, right. So you know, it looks like this like really intense. Uh, super Which, for reference, can you teach them what like the vertical lines mean? That's that's a having. Yeah. And 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 how does that work? That reduces supply by making mining harder, from what I understand. Exactly. Yeah. And we are coming up on the the last having pretty soon. Um, and I, I don't I don't do mining. That's one of the few things that I haven't done. Um, but yeah, it, it's the the gist of Bitcoin and frankly the entire market because whatever happens with BTC happens Got related it. to the rest of the market. And stock to flow is something I honestly used to preach quite a bit and have stopped as the the scene has kind of changed. When I got into this space, crypto was a joke. I, I mean, I got laughed at for telling people like, "Hey, I'm doing this," um, and it's not anymore. And I think. This model was built um, prior to this kind of huge acceleration of interest in it. Um, so I think it's kind of lost its value. At this so point. you know what's funny is this blue area on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I, I saw this for the first time and I was naive enough to just say, screw it. And I actually have a YouTube video that you can find. It, that you can publicly look this video up. Patrick Kenny buys Bitcoin. <laughs> and I made a video in November of 2022 right there at 16 yeah. and some change. And I only And I literally said... I'm only buying one coin, and if it goes down to 12, I'll buy two, and if it goes down to eight, I'll buy three. That was my entire strategy, and I haven't let go of it. Mm -hmm. So you said this is the last halving. Is this the final halving, or is there going to be another halving? I believe we're coming up with the final halving. Okay, and and so at at some point, do we get to like a degradation where interest starts to diminish and people are not interested at 100,000? Yeah, well, so... I want to take a step back for a second. So stock to flow um, and technical analysis in general works because so many people are watching it, right? Like the reason a, a bull pennant actually goes up when because millions of people are acting on it. It's a famous pattern. And I think stock to flow became one of the more famous patterns people are watching in crypto. 
Um, and so, you know, when it reaches that blue zone, a lot of people are acting on that. Yeah. Um, and so that ties into to what we're about to talk about. So um, interest falling flat. So, you know, I'm one of the people in this space that I've dedicated my life to it, but I've never thought crypto was going to change the world. I never really found anything all that fascinating. fascinating. That's interesting that you say that because that's how I feel. But you're like in it and I'm like, screw it. It's, um, well, I look at it as a video game. Like, I got into crypto not to change the world and, and be part of this huge revolution. I got into crypto to make money. And of course. I think, you know, most people get into it that you're one or the other. You're either a Bitcoin maxi who thinks this Bitcoin's going to change the financial institutions. And I think aspects of it will. I think blockchain um, in of itself will. But irreplic irreplicable data was not. A, a new thought um you know i think nfts was essentially just on-chain data displayed in a different way and i think the reason i didn't like nfts was that there was nothing really behind it and, and when bitcoin does topple out and there is no no more decrease of supply i mean it's just internet money um hmm. so so do you have a bold prediction of a peak in bitcoin price like everybody seems to have i mean screw it everybody's got a number i i'd say around 160 um but forever I, that's the highest it'll ever get is that what you think um well it depends so so this is an interesting thing so i think bitcoin could theoretically go up in value forever right got it it doesn't mean it's worth that much right like if if you i'll give you an example um i had an, an attorney said this to me so if i can convince you to buy my pink elephant for fifty thousand dollars is it, is it worth it's now worth fifty thousand dollars right because you it's worth what it. you're willing to pay for it. but if the next guy is only willing to pay a thousand dollars for it that, that's what it's worth. And if Bitcoin is never going to be something that is actually used, has a legitimate use case in this world, then there's there's no reason that anyone would be continuously buying it. And I think we will, as regulation comes in, kind of go back to what it was. Of Bitcoin was initially just a, a payment transferring system of you know people who want to have their funds in this kind of secure. Uh, anti-establishment asset, which is fine. Um, I know a lot of Bitcoin maxis who are worth well over half a billion dollars, but and, and will probably hold forever. I just don't think that people will be buying it after that interest kind of peaks out, mm -hmm. and regulation will kill it. You know, like this concept of I got the next hundred x in crypto. I mean, that it's it's obscene. Uh, yeah, and no government wants that. So, so when you said use case. Um... I guess that leads to a different question. You know a lot of projects. I know Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's basically it. Mm -hmm. So there's all these things that are called projects. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there are some that do have legitimate world use cases that yep. you really like that you can share with us? Um, you know, the only project that I think has like a legitimate world use case is, is WorldCoin, as funny as that is. It's Sam, WorldCoin? Sam Altman's project. And Got it. You know, I think um, I think there's a lot of valuable tech in crypto, and if you're looking at transaction speeds and things like that, there are a lot of projects that are, are doing something great. But I think when you take that outside of it, uh, outside of the market, uh, we kind of come, uh, you know, quite a bit less valuable. Um, and I don't bet on real world applications. I bet on where the interest is going to go. Um, so, I mean, betting on early, you know, good founders, things like that. People have done cool things. Like the Solana founders have done some really amazing things outside of crypto. And I think leveraging that coming into the space, they were able to build this huge project. But I remember being in the live rooms and Discord listening to the Solana founders with 50 other people when it was a joke. They lied about their circulating supply. I mean, I, and I look at Solana as, you know, this top project now. A lot of people think it'll flip ETH. And I mean, it was kind of a joke when it launched and it's just changed. It's kind of interesting how these projects, uh, from what I know, can be created by anyone. Yeah. Anyone. You can go on Google right now and create whatever token you want. Name it anything. Yeah. It's funny. I'd, so I'd, I'd asked the group uh, in, in Volio for questions, and one of them brought up this thing that I, th again, it's funny to me. It's He said, what's your thoughts on pudgy pe penguins? And, I, and you walked in this room before we started filming, and I pulled this up, and I was like, should we talk about the pudgies? And I thought it was a joke, and you're like, I love pudgy penguins. Yeah. So, Luca, so what does this do? Okay. Why do I want one? So pudgies is actually one of the few projects that I think is doing something very cool. And Luca Schnetzler, the, the, the owner of it, um, who – I'll give you the quick story. So Luca – pudgy penguins is a very popular NFT that came out, and the founding team – just completely dropped the ball. They had a Rolling Stone collaboration, and then just the entire community of 8,888 holders were up in arms and essentially uh, put Pudgy Penguins into a situation where they had to go on a fire sale. Um, and Luca purchased the entire IP for two and a half million. Um, and at the time, you know, I faded the entire NFT run. I got CryptoKitties in 2017, which are worthless. Um, I don't think there's any real value in 
um, what NFTs were, but what Luca is doing with Pudgies is completely rebranding what NFTs are and what they should be. So Luca has this really extensive background in e-commerce. He rebranded uh, Von Dutch, if you're familiar with them. He built up the brand Gel Blasters and got it into Walmart and Target and you know, had it a top seller on Amazon. Um, and he's doing the exact same thing with Pudgy. So NFTs in whole, it's the, the, these 8,808 very cute Pudgy penguins. Um, and what it was before... So this little guy, just to be clear, is an NFT. Yes. And you can own him. Yeah. So let's say you own... Why do you want to own one? So... Luca has now sold, I don't want to get the numbers wrong, um, I want to say 750,000 products sold in Walmart. And those products were leased from this NFT, not specifically this one. But let's say you own this one. You can put this specific image up for into their IP listing thing, and so they're selling toys. Um, they're selling Pudgy Penguin toys, and let's say you own that one, and you get picked to be in their IP program, and now your toy is being sold in Walmart. You get a rep share of that. Um, and obviously there are 8,888, it's where the, you would be picked, um, but there are a lot of other things. Pudgy Penguins recently did a collaboration with Dimension and uh, had an airdrop to all holders. I had three Pudgy Penguins, my airdrop peaked at around $50,000. Um, you know, it kind of pays for itself. And then the big thing is, are you, do you remember Club Penguin? I do, I remember. I, I didn't know what it is, but I've heard of it. Yeah, it was a really popular game back in the day. Do you know how much Disney purchased Club Penguin for? I don't. $750 million. Wow. They let it die. Um, it was a massive game. And Lucas is, is effectively recreating that in a much, much cooler way where he's making entry to the market um, very easy. So let's say you go to Walmart. You don't know what NFTs are. You've never bought crypto. You buy one of these cute little toys or figures, whichever one. It comes with a, a scannable card that you can get a free NFT from. So a, a character trait for your little pudgy. Um, you can put, it might be a hat, t-shirt, whatever, but you can buy and sell those traits. So mm -hmm. the toy is $16. You might end up with $200 worth of free NFT gear that you can, can trade with. And he's now building this, you know, very cool, immersive world. And it's a legitimate product. Like people can go play on pudgyworld.com. They can go buy the toys. They can buy it from their kids and the kids will like it. That, that's joy. That's a, that's a real thing. And that's what it should be. The entire concept of NFTs is undeniable ownership, right? I, this is mine and you can't tell me otherwise. Um, right. And Luca has completely embodied that. And I've never seen another project do that. The only one we saw kind of do that was Bored Apes, but. That's what I was going to ask you about. I, I'd heard all about these. I don't have any, to be clear. Um, like, why did that take? Because I remember Bored Apes, people were paying maybe millions. Yeah. For what? It's a JPEG. Stat status. And that status. So it's like a Rolex or something. This is why. This is why I never bought NFTs. Like I, I had my experience in 2017 with CryptoKitties, and I just thought it was dumb. I, I never saw any real value in it, and I never, you know, I've made most of my money by catching trends early, and I did not think that NFTs would blow up again i just i thought that, that people would realize what happened in 2017 would happen again which it did you know 99 percent of these projects that were selling for millions of dollars are they're worthless now um yeah which leads me to there's both there's two sides to this that i want to talk about the first side we'll talk about the good side first and then of course we got to talk about the scams yeah um the good side is it do you agree with the movement that you're starting to see where NFTs are, are, I mean, this is a physical item when you're talking about it, you're getting a royalty deal to a physical item, but the odds of you actually having it sold yeah. are probably pretty low. Yeah, but there are but, so many other avenues with it. Yeah, like, I, I, funny enough, I was just planning a like European summer right now, and, mm -hmm. and I was looking at Lake Como at Airbnbs in Italy. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm looking through and I find this site, maybe I can find it on here in a minute. And it was a house that you, it was an NFT mm -hmm. and you would buy the NFT to own the NFT and the NFT was, you know, millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. But is that where the world is going where instead of the traditional real estate transaction, now you just are buying an NFT and it's quicker, faster, easier. Um, Do you agree with that and how that's moving or is that going to turn into a big scam too? I mean, it could. I think there are ways to go about it. So let's say, let's use a hotel as an example or a house. So I sell an NFT of a house in Lake Como. I have 10 NFTs of it and 10 people buy it and we all pay the same amount. Um, if there's no aftermarket trading, it kind of makes sense because, you know, now it's just a timeshare. But that, that's what I mean. Like a lot of the stuff that is going on right now, a lot of these brands entering the space are 
essentially doing something that's already being done and calling it this new fancy thing. Like uh, uh, going in on a, a property and sharing it, I mean, it's just a timeshare. And we can call it some new thing. I'm sure someone will do that. They'll call it um, <laughs> uh, RFTs or so, you know, some, uh, some real estate fungible token or something. Um, but, and I think we'll keep seeing that. We'll keep, we'll keep seeing fancy names thrown on things like metaverse. I am so bullish on digital worlds in general. I, I just think the concept, if someone can create a one-to-one -one rendition of the entire world where you can move around on a headset and it, it's, it's minimal lag, I think, I, I don't think there's anyone who wouldn't want to check that out. I think that's insane. And, and we saw people throw the tagline metaverse, uh, mm -hmm. which no one says metaverse anymore. People raised hundreds of millions of dollars to build metaverses, um, meta rebranded to meta. But it wasn't a new concept. The concept of a digital space wasn't new. They just threw a fancy name on it and yeah. called it new tech. Which in that regard, I, I, I don't know if this is the same thing, but there was people buying like land. I remember there was like an Atari logo. Is that... Is that still circulating now like it was? It was not in the nearly. COVID. Yeah, not nearly what it was. I mean, that's the thing. Like, we're not there yet. I I love the concept of digital tech, but it's probably 10 years away. Yeah. A lot of these companies started building and realized, okay, the tech isn't there yet. We'll have to suffice for a video game right now. And it's like, you know, a lot of people uh, role play in Grand Theft Auto. So I'm sure right. it's possible. And they spend money to to have their own little digital mansion that yeah. they never could have in real life. Right. But um, so you know, the same concept. Wilder World is a perfect example of that. Raised, uh, I can't remember how much, but hundreds of millions of dollars to build this digital space, and they've just essentially created like GTA. And it's like, okay. cool, but it's a very, very poor version of GTA. Um, yeah. So it's 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 an impressive. You know? So the question mark then becomes, who could make that happen big time? It would be GTA getting into the crypto world. Right. Which and, could well, be interesting. That's the thing. It's all money. And who's going to win that battle? Is it going to be the anti-establishment guys who made money from crypto? Probably not. It's probably going to be the, the endless piles of money via the establishment. And yeah. it's like, you know, I think I think it'll be one of those, you know, worldwide projects where, like, lead, led by Meta and the other hundreds of billions of dollar corporations. And I, I don't think anyone will be able to compete with that. Yeah. So this was the example for the reference, the first NFT of Lake Como. I don't know if this was the exact same house, but I just searched Lake Como NFT. and uh, Maybe there's two of them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can buy these homes as an NFT. Yeah. And I think obviously we're a ways away, but that now is sort of leading me to my other side of this. Even this, I think about, now this is a really interesting metaphor but or comparison I think about right now the lawsuits that are going on with big tobacco. Mm -hmm. And the reason there's lawsuits going on is they're, they're um, strawberries and bright colors and vapes and yeah. this. And it's enticing young people mm -hmm. to vape. Right. Is this not enticing young kids to potentially get scammed? I'm not saying Pudgy Penguins is a scam, by the mm -hmm. way. But there's – I could go to find a ton of NFTs that look just like this. Right. Well, this, this opens an amazing conversation, and half the, or really 90% of the reason I don't think crypto will last, uh, really last more than a couple of years, is, is exactly that. Regulation will come in because it needs to. This is a beautiful product, but, you know, I, f I keep up with Luca's Twitter. Every single time Luca posts anything on Twitter, there is immediately a bot that responds with a ma malicious Spam. link. A malicious yeah. link that if you click and connect your MetaMask to, you will be drained. That is horrifying. That doesn't exist in traditional world right now. And it needs to happen. I mean, crypto is free roam. And and this is a perfect example of, the, of Luca is building one of the best projects in the space right now, like really doing what it should be. But there's still problems like that. And, and until regulation comes in, it'll continue to happen. And once regulation does come in, the concept of crypto being this fast-paced market where you can make a ton of money, it just dies off. And, th and that's the whole interest of crypto. Right. So on the flip side, a, a notable example of someone that, and I'm just stating what I've seen on the internet. I'm not saying he is this or that. Mm -hmm. But a notable example of a person was uh, Logan Paul. Yeah. This thing called CryptoZoo. Can you explain what that was to the audience a little bit? Yeah. So so this is, a, this is something that happened across the board. Logan got the most attention for... For doing it, but every you know, I could name probably twenty people off the top of my head who were either part partook or uh, launched their own NFT and just it went to zero. And it and it was 
massive fraud. And I mean, he's getting exposed left and right and there. Right. And I mean, articles and on I, Medium, CoffeeZilla, you name it. Exposed is one thing, but I think a lot of people, crypto is in a gray area. And exactly the, the situation I explained before, if I can convince you to buy my pink elephant, which doesn't exist, there's no pink elephant, um, but you know, a picture of it, and I convince you it's worth $30,000 and you pay it, and then you realize it's not worth $30,000. Well, I didn't really commit any fraud. You, I convinced you it was worth that much money. The De Beers family convinced people the diamonds were worth. Is know? it kind of is the line there? Is the fraud line how you convince them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think I think there will. So I had a lot of people around me um, launch their own NFTs and, in a lot of cases, just perpetuate multi multi million dollar fraud and look at it like, oh no, it's fine because it's crypto. It's not. It's a, and, I mean, it's a, it's it's a pump and dump. It's, yeah, and I think you know the SEC is very aware of all of this, and I do think. I mean, we saw it with Squiggles. You know, the Squiggle guys are under an. SEC oh, I didn't see that. What's right that? Now. Squiggles. Mm -hmm. If you look up SEC investigation, Squiggles, a huge write-up will come up, um, and they'll probably be indicted. And that yeah. that was a huge thing, and it'll keep happening. I mean, people forget the statute of limitations. This can go on for seven more years, or however long. Um, and I think there will be a sweep. I think a lot of people who promised you X and did not deliver will, will go to jail um, or at least be heavily fined um, to where if I said, hey, buy my NFT and it'll grant you free ice cream for the rest of your life. And I never got free ice cream for the rest of my life. Well, you defrauded me. That's fraud. I do see your argument, though. Actually, I've never thought of it that way, where if I have a painting and it's just you're getting this picture and I can convince you it's worth 30,000. Well, that's the art lady at the art show last week in Scottsdale that was charging yeah. 15000 for her painting. I don't know what it's worth. Yeah. She said 15000 Why is Picasso worth it? It's but it's when they're saying, if you buy this painting, you will get this superpower or mm -hmm. you'll get this ice cream like you're saying. Yeah. That's where the fraud is starting to come yeah, into play. Yeah, and there was a ton of that. Um, and I do think a lot of people think they are they got off scot-free. Um, and I, I don't wish bad on anyone, but I, I do think you know the people who did commit fraud will likely – face their day on that yeah okay so this is interesting stuff and you know i'm not trying to be the fraud guy but that's why i feel like i haven't ever really jumped into it because it's like why not just invest in long-term stocks or real yeah. estate when i when i could well, you know i think a lot this. of people like yourself you're, you're quite successful you've had successful success in other markets and i think a lot of people like you look at crypto like well I don't think this is going to change the world, so why would I invest? And yeah. I think if you look at it like this is just a funny video game that people are right now interested in, and it is the only market on the world where I, I had a I, I I bought something at one hundred and eighty thousand uh, maybe three weeks ago, sold it for uh, and I'm talking about the market cap was one hundred eighty thousand. It peaked at twenty six point five million. Wow, that is a, a over one hundred and sixty x. Mm. That doesn't happen in other markets. No, no. And I think if you look at it like that, like this is an opportunity where you can jump in. And if you understand what it really is, and I, call, I tell everyone it's a sham market, then you can play it. So is liquidity ever an issue on examples like that? Absolutely. Where you, where you let's say you were, I mean, you said you did. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a situation where you couldn't sell or it's not um, possible? Yes. And it hasn't happened in a while. And like, it's more it's it's uh, now for me it's the inability to buy without moving the price right so i, I use something called a twap um so if i want to buy call it a million dollars of uh, axie infinity and i don't want to shoot off the price or shoot off any notifications for people watching for those types of buys i'll send off orders across every exchange every two three four five six seconds it'll buy uh you know nine thousand dollars worth in, in different uh you know motions to wow. kind of avoid it and with hyper for example the token i was just talking about uh i, I so they had a cap um you could only buy a hundred thousand dollars per a hundred thousand tokens per wallet which i think at the time was eight hundred dollars and so i would have loved i i knew the team behind it had done previously really big things so i would have loved to throw fifty thousand dollars into it but i think i only got around six thousand in because that's the most i could have gotten and i mean you know in theory had i gotten fifty thousand in at 180 that would have been obscene. Um, but I have had situations years ago where, um, and this is why I tell people not to play shit coins, where it's like. Well, I'm going to pause you there. I just saw a clip that kind of went viral a little bit. You said, I would recommend people buy shit coins so, on a different podcast said, for if they had like $500. So what was the context? There? Yeah. So I said that to be provocative mostly, but I do kind of agree with it. Where for the past eight years, I have completely told everyone, do not do shit coins. And, and I, and What's do, a shit coin? It is a coin with um, that some random person launched that has no backing. They have no plan. It's um, like Do Dogecoin. Is that a 
Shit yeah. coin? Yeah. And you're not like so... Meme coin is the, the term that I would use, I right. guess. Yeah. So when I'm betting on a project, there's a lot I can bet on. I can bet on the founders. I can bet on their tokenomics. I can bet on their roadmap. I can bet on what people are going to see and, and how big it'll go. Um, so there are catalysts I can look for, the token unlocks, things like that that I can watch out for. With a lot of these coins like Doge or whatever else it may be, like, okay, I'll give you an example. I, I looked at Sheeb. Are you familiar with Sheeb? Sheeb? I've heard of it. I looked at Sheeb the day after it launched. I didn't buy it. I bought something called Poodle. Um, I looked at probably 20 dog tokens at that point. And I was looking for the next big dog token that would do well. And um, I, I picked Poodle. It didn't do well. And then Sheeb went to a multi-billion dollar market cap. I hmm. would have made a, a endless, like obs an obscene amount of money on that. But there's no way to tell. Like, you know, I didn't buy it because... I mean, it was just a guess. It, it's it's a flip of a coin of what's going to do well. Sheep happened to do well, but let's say I bought it at half a million market cap and it went to five million. That's a ten x. I would have sold. I yeah. wouldn't have held for the billions because what am I betting on? I'm betting. Which on, also you wouldn't have known. I'm betting. There's no way to know. I'm betting on millions of people buying sheep. There's yeah. There's no way it's to like guess. Like people that. buying Bitcoin when they say, "Oh, I bought Bitcoin at." Yeah. I can guess that. I mean, I bought Bitcoin at eight hundred actually. Yeah. I, can, I sold at twelve hundred. I can. But I there's know? a thesis you know? behind it. You know what I mean? There's there's something to bet on. There's there's havings, right? There's events. And with the Solana, I bought Solana at sixty-eight cents. I bought it because uh, they they had a very strong team and a vision, and it made sense. And you're looking for what has the possibility to be the next billion-dollar market cap. It's very hard, you know. What I've done for the past, uh, you know, coming up on a decade is was learning what makes those th these markets tick and, and yeah. what is going to be big. And I'm at a point now where. If a project comes into the space or talks about launching, I'll look at it for an hour, read everything about it, and I'll know what its likely potential is. And that can change. I'm not I'm not a god. I don't know everything. Um, but you can't do that with shit coins. And the reason I said in the clip, like, if you're coming in with 50 to 500, I think this is the last cycle to actually make a lot of money and, like, really change your life. And for, for reference, I got in this space with uh, $5,500, and it's quite a bit more than that now. Um, it, and I don't know what I would be doing without crypto. It, it fully changed my life. It, it, it saved my and my family's lives. And I, 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 it's hard for me to tell people you should get into crypto because I do look at it as a sham market. But I, I do think if you have spent the time to understand the market, know how it moves, then and you're coming in with less than $1,000, you should trade micro caps, which are sequence. And it's like, you know, I see a lot of people coming into the space now and, and buying Bitcoin at, at roughly 50000 with $1,000 hoping that it will change their life. And it's like, well, you might, you might make $500, but at that point, go get a job. Right. You know, it's not going to pay your bills. And it's like if you're coming in with the, with the goal to make money, you need, you need, to, you need to look at micro yeah. caps and shit coins and meme coins. So there's going to be a group of people listening to that, and they're going to say, okay – you said, you know, for instance, you said I was looking at the dog coins, mm -hmm. but then now you're you're also saying, you know, if you have fifty dollars, five hundred dollars, thousand dollars, go into these coins. What website or group of websites do you use to actually study the tokenomics, the founders, and yeah. see the information? Is there any websites that you favor over another? So, on the topic of looking for micro caps, it, it's like the hardest part of the market. But if you want to jump into it. The basics is go to DexTools.com or DexScreener, go to their live new pairs and scroll what is coming out live. And there are a lot of things you have to look for. You have to look for liquidity. The, the basic example... Dex is D-E-X? Yes. And you have to look for, in, in a basic sense, something that people have put enough time into that they will not abandon. Because your goal, your goal is getting in early and avoiding a rug pull, right? So you go on, you look for a strong locked liquidity. Oftentimes, they won't be locked immediately to avoid snipers. You know, a, a, so this is it. A semi-low tax, and if you go to live new new pairs on the left over there, you'll see just uh, where's it at? Up more, up more, right there. Oh, right there, new uh, pairs. And just you know, they'll just keep coming in. Um, and the one time I did this, so these are all brand new. Yeah, this will just keep coming down as tokens launch. So these are ranked by trending. These are coming out uh, like as they come out. So whatever is is listed to Dex Tools. Wow. So that came out, what, uh, probably a minute or two ago. So these all came out within the last day. Yeah. Or really, this whole screen probably. Yeah, the liquidity is like 2000 bucks. Mm -hmm. And so you look for things that have strong liquidity, a really well thought out website, really well done art. So you want to find someone who's spent at least a couple grand on a website, a couple grand on some art, and enough to where they're not just going to abandon this. They're not just going to be like, oh, it didn't work. They're going to stick with it and keep pumping it. And so the the one time I did this, and I to anyone watching, I don't really suggest this until you spent a lot of time researching because it's very difficult and you're very likely to be wrong for the first hundred tries. 
But the one time I did this, I went on, I found something called Chiba Neko at like 20K market cap, had a really cool, really cool art on the Twitter with like five followers, really well done website. And so I bought some. I was like, why not? Let's just see how this goes. And it only peaked at like 1.6 million. The 20K to 1.6 million is it's pretty pretty great. Um, yeah. And so it's it's not that hard. It's like if you know what to look for, if you know the signs to, to avoid, it's not that hard. Um, but I think for anyone jumping into the space, like we're building Involio to be the platform for anyone. We're, the whole goal is to make entering the market easier and safer. Um, so for anyone jumping into it, I, I would say go to Involio. So speaking of Involio, we, we put out a Q&A panel. And there's some questions I would like to ask you now that we've gotten through some of the stuff I want to talk about. Let's do it. This one comes from Oscar Vito. He said, what are your thoughts on Ripple? Is it going to be a bullish coin? I'm so happy you brought this up because I wanted to say this earlier. So Ripple, are you familiar with the Jabir's family? Nope. The diamond facade? No. So the Jabir's family was the first family to like really monopolize diamonds. And it, it, you can Google this. It's all true. Um, they created a marketing campaign about how much a man should spend on his wife's wedding ring from going from gold to diamonds and how oh, yeah. it needed to be uh, if you want to impress your wife, it needs to be, I think, three months of your wage goes to your wedding ring. And that was how they created, they hyperinflated the price of diamonds and lied about the, the supply of it. Ripple is in a lawsuit right now for essentially the same thing, and no one seems to understand that. The whole reason people like Ripple is because they created the facade that they would revolutionize the banking industry. Ripple is a privately owned, pumpable company. The banking industry will not use them. It, I, I would bet any dollar amount on that. They'll just do CDBCs. You know, like it's there's no reason why world governments would support a privately owned company and take them to this absurd echelon. And I, the fact that anyone believes that Ripple, with no previous ties to banking, has any chance of any of that happening is obscene to me. So I think Ripple will do well because of the cult following they have, but I, I think it's a joke. Wow. There's a headline right there. So Oscar... I would say so. You're you're saying you're bullish, but you just don't like it. I don't hold any, and I, yeah, I mean, thing you know, um, the largest markets in the world, and this is sad to say, are dumb, right? You know, the largest corporations in the world are, are mostly catering to dumb money, and dumb money tends to believe lies like that. So if they'll continue this marketing stint and con con continue convincing people that they're going to change the banking industry, I'm sure it'll go up. So, how many coins? are actually good is Define it fine good has a use case legitimate use case isn't backed by some sham thing like it, it it's just like the, lo the longer we talk it's just like oh that's a scam this is a scam well, this is a scam there's, there's good in crypto and then there's just good in general yeah i think good in general like i I'm, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this but i truly look at crypto as entirely a sham market i do not think this will be around i don't think anyone will care about it in five ten years i think it'll be a memory wow. from the past i think regulation will entirely kill it um so there are a lot of really good crypto projects that are revolutionizing the crypto space but in terms of a really good project that will like you would bet on in the world? I, I, I wouldn't say any. I wouldn't bet on Sam Altman's coin. You wouldn't, uh, what was that called again? World coin. World coin, even though you think that that's the best use case right now. I think it's the only legitimate use case. And I'm what sure exactly are... is the use case in, in very simple terms? You know, I haven't really even researched it that much. It's um, essentially like, like, are you familiar with Clear at airports? Yeah, of course. It's similar I have to Clear. It. So essentially what they're doing is, is reading um, retinas. Yeah, it said eyesight when I popped it up on the screen earlier. It was all yeah. readings. So, I mean, it's an interesting concept. And if I'm going to bet on anyone in general, I mean, I'd love to bet on Sam Altman. Um, but do I think he'll put enough effort into it to get it where it needs to once the interest in crypto kind of starts to landslide? And no. Yeah. So it is it fair to say that you do a lot of your um, – when you're saying I'm betting on – you're betting on people a lot of the times. Yeah, I think in anything. I think in any investment you're ever making, you're betting on the person. When yeah. we're raising for Involio, they're betting on us. Which you guys raised 1.4 million? 1.6 now. 1.6 million now. And and when do you guys on Involio plan to, I think maybe you've done it, but maybe not, plan to start monetizing to where you know, folks could charge for their yep. trades? At the end of this month, we're opening monetization. Got it. And then your part of your guys' revenue model is to take a percentage, I'm guessing? Yeah, we're going to match WAP. So WAP is a, a, a platform that's essentially a leaderboard for Discords. They take 3%, so we're going to match them. 
Oh, so you got you, the creator is going to get ninety seven percent. Oh, so it's not going to be like 20 percent. Like wow. No, and you know it's crazy because um, Stock Twits I think is taking forty percent of their creators' revenue, which is uh, one of our larger competitors. How many users do they have? Well, so Stock Twits is an interesting one because I think their entire user. If you go on Stock Twits right now, your computer will start to overheat because of the bots on there. If you try to have an interaction with someone on that platform in the comment section, you will be blown away. It is like, it, it's just, it's like there, no one on there is real. I, I spent four hours trying to talk to people on StockTwits. I couldn't find one single real person. Mm. Um, so StockTwits is its own very interesting ballpark. Um, but they're, they're over, you know, they claim to be over millions of users. Yeah, which in general, I can barely get through the site without a trillion ads popping up already. It's like a porno website. Yeah, it's crazy. You- so another question came in. It's a generalization question, but I think it'd be nice to ask, how are you able to predict the market so accurately? Um, man, did you ever play Grand Theft Auto? Yeah, of course. Do you remember the cheats? I remember the cheats, like, you know, like X, O, Y. Did you ever y. memorize those? Did I ever memorize those? I Muscle memory. Um, maybe. A lot of people I ask did. I, at one point, I could probably still do slow motion aim if I tried. It just was so, I did it, I played that game so much that I, I fully memorized that code. And that, that goes on in a lot of other situations. And I have done this every day, wake up, go to sleep for almost a decade. And I think in anything, I think the real secret to success is dedication. Focus on it. If you do, if you stay at something long enough, you will get good at it. Yeah. If you do it longer than everyone else, you will be the best at it. And I think you know there's a lot of ways. And we're launching an education section on Envolio this week where I talk about everything I look at. So I hope that helps some people. Um, but I mean, it's endless. I, I I look at I look at everything. I look at the team. I look at what they've done previously. I look at their tokenomics. I, I look at how much is locked. I look at how much they sold. I look at, I, I, I built something, I built trading systems. Mm-hmm. And before AI started- Like robots kind of? Uh, kind of. Um, before AI, so there was this whole debate before AI really started to pop off these past couple of years where I used something called social sentiment scanning to get an answer. And other people would run um, AI through it. And I never, AI was a joke up until ChatGPT. And anyone who was using AI trading systems, unless you're, unless you're, uh, it's a hundred million dollars Five hundred million dollar system. It's just a joke. Um, so I never used AI. I used something called social sentiment scanners, and it, it ties back into when I preach: you have to catch trends early. You have to look at something and then understand the person next to you. They'll when they might see it and what they'll think about it. So I know if I'm spending my twenty four seven looking for new assets, looking at crypto, understanding the entire market. I understand that you're not. I understand when you might find out about this project. And if it's a if it's a project that I think the masses will understand. Peak and interest enough for a guy like me to buy it or somebody else. And I doesn't. know I'm buying it way before you'll find out about yeah. it. Then it's as simple as that. And, you know, it's a corny answer because like, oh, you have to spot trends early. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think in anything, if you if you look hard enough, it, it it's really not that difficult. Yeah. So I want to transition this into something that's kind of more in line with my podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in in wealth creation strategies is how I always, mm-hmm. you know, deem things. But in your regard, you're talking about crypto, you don't necessarily believe in all of it, but you're definitely using it mm-hmm. to generate wealth. What right now are you doing to take the winnings and the profits from the crypto market to ensure that long term you're going to be generating passive income or wealth continually, you know, continually for years and years to come. Like, what strategies are are, are you doing that yet? I'm not. So I, I should be, and I'm very well well aware that I should be. But I I have taken probably under two hundred thousand dollars out of crypto over this decade. Um, I have 99% of my, my funds in crypto. And, and, and solely because I, I didn't go to college and I didn't learn other markets. I, I, when I say I've dedicated nearly a decade to this market, I, I really did. I haven't done anything else. And so I know I'm safe here. I know the risks. I know risks that other people don't know. Um, so I feel comfortable here. And I have a goal. And you know, a lot of it is that I've been doing this for so long that I have a monetary goal now that if I don't reach that, it'll feel like I've almost wasted a decade. 
Um, wow. So as I approach that goal, I'll, I'll, I'll take it out. But how I am looking into the future is taking what I've learned in this market and then building something real with Volio. So Ryan and I team up and we're kind of polar opposites. Him and I are very different and we've played in different aspects of, of general markets for the past, you know, however long he's been in. And um, it's kind of perfect where I understand a hard side of the market. He understands the venture side of the market. And we're building something that I think when we are at scale, the world will just love. I, I, I'm building this for me. I use the platform. I learn something new on the platform. I, I use it more than anything and genuinely not just because I'm, I'm one of the founders. I love it. And we'll continue to add things that that I'll love and mm-hmm. and that I believe that other people who have had these similar experiences will love too. And we really are building this out to be a game changer. And, and we, as we talked about before, fraud is is rampant in this space and other spaces as well. And there's really no one doing anything about it. It, it just happens. You know, we've got CoffeeZilla who calls out uh, these scammers, which is great. And I, I love CoffeeZilla, but it doesn't do anything. People have very short attention spans. If something bad happens, they'll move on the next week. No one cares that Logan Paul did that anymore. He's got a number one or a huge podcast. It, it, it doesn't matter. And I think with Involio, I want to build something that lasts. And I, I really think we have a chance at just toppling over this billion-dollar industry that frauds have created in, in selling courses. And then your your goal would be to obviously grow this, and I know Ryan's goal, to eventually exit mm-hmm. the, into something where you're creating like a – like a Twitter for, I mean, that's what it feels like. Because I don't want to say it's Twitter, but it's like a Twitter for. It's similar right now, yeah. You know, for and for traders, it'll molt, and you know, it's it's so difficult for me to say my end goal with Involio is it'll it'll constantly change. And you know, I think when we talk about the venture space, I think everyone's end goal is an exit, um, right? Like money matters, but I think for me, what really matters is is disrupting the space and doing something that will forever alter an industry. So, the. Most of the questions is very simple. They want to know how to get rich. They want to know, and, you, and you've already talked about your strategies. Um, but a couple of the other ones were questions that I don't even know. Okay. One says, what are your thoughts on route? Got released this morning. Hard to pinpoint. Maybe you don't even know yet because you haven't even seen it. it. Another one was on my Instagram page. We already talked about the one from Instagram, but the other one said, it said, they always, and I love this one, they always say to dollar cost average into a coin, which I don't know if you agree with that or not, but they always say to dollar cost average into coin, which I, I, um, you know, I know certainly in the stock market, that is the way to wealth. But the question was interesting. What's the best way to dollar cost average out of a coin, or do you just sell outright? I thought that was an interesting question. It's a great question. Uh, timing the top of the market. So there's one indicator specifically, specifically for the crypto market to find the top of the market. If Coinbase hits number one on the App Store, exit. That, the, we will top out. In the <laughs> That's such market. a cool little trick. Yeah, That's it, funny. It will work 100% of the time. Um, but there are a lot of other ways, and it's um, it gets really deep. So if you're watching tokens, you have to keep track of tokens uh, lockups and when people are going to get huge unlocks. Um, you have to track the major wallets and follow their movements. Um, uh, and, you know, there's a f- very famous quote that I agree and disagree with where it's it's not about timing the market, it's about time in the market, mm-hmm. which is true. I just don't think a lot of us have that time, really. Uh, I think a lot of us are really rushed. And as, as short-form content has gone on, we've all gotten, um, I don't want to say lazier, but we don't want to wait as long. Um, and so I think it's, in, at least in crypto, it is, you're not going to time the market. You're not going to get that perfect entry. You're not going to get the perfect exit. And you should sell when you're happy. Um, you should do what makes sense for you. And don't focus on getting like the perfect return. I mean, I got in Solana at $0.68, cents, sold it around 18, 16 to $18. I was happy with that. It went to $300. I could have made $90 million had I held my stack. But I was happy with that. I parlayed it into something else that did really well. Um, and so there isn't really like a... A perfect trick. I've built indicators that help me exit the market that we're offering for free on Involio, so I'm happy to share them. But mm-hmm. there isn't really a perfect answer. Yeah, well, that's interesting though. The the sentiment of when Coinbase is number one, that is interesting. It's worked every. You know, the stock market is is the same. When your librarian, your server, your bartender, your mailman start talking about the markets and how hot they are, it's probably going to get right. you know near the top. 
transitioning out to a macroeconomic viewpoint, what are your thoughts of where we sit now? The Fed just, um, you know, recently sort of slowed their roll a little bit. They think mm -hmm. that we're going to cut rates in, in potentially May or June. What are your thoughts on the crypto market? We have the halving cycle in uh, in April. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, from the looks of it, we'll start getting cuts in May or June. What are your what are your overall thoughts on how that all of that combined is going to impact the, the crypto markets? You know, crypto is so back and forth that it's so difficult to, to, to tie in real world events because depending on the week, it, it just could impact so differently. Um, so my sentiment on crypto changes day to day, like when you asked me earlier, uh, what do I think Bitcoin will top out at? I, I maybe 160, but I am not betting on it. I change my sentiment as the market as the market changes, and it's one of those things of it's one of the few markets where you can lose 99% of your investment at the drop of a dime. And I think mm. it is one of those things where a lot of people get caught up in oh so and so said Bitcoin was going to go to 100,000, and it's only at 68,000, so I'm going to keep holding. Um, you have to change your sentiment very quickly, and you have to accept that you're wrong in this market, and not try to convince yourself that you're you're not so as we wrap this up um i'm just kind of curious who are your biggest inspirations you know getting going you're an investor at the end of the day mm -hmm. you're an entrepreneur at the end of the day who did you look up to who are your mentors um and what did they teach you and instill in you to you know for success and humility and continuing on and pushing forward um if i were to say who my one mentor was, I, I would say it was Luca. I grew up really poor. Um, I lost my father at a really young age and was very hopeless. I after, Where were you from? Uh, Long Island, New York. Got it. Um, I There's a statistic of uh, if you lose your father at a young age, you're 20 times as likely to end up in prison. And I, I really, I learned that and I believed that. And I, I grew up around a lot of wealth and I, I looked at it as just a fallacy. That, that that's their thing and I'll never have that. And I won't even try to have that because it's it's not possible. And I grew up with Luca for the first few years of elementary school to then he moved to LA, caught up with him and saw he was doing quite well, um, went to visit him and he was like, yeah, I, I bought this townhouse for $650,000. He's 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And it just, seeing that, seeing that someone my age that I grew up with really did it really broke that barrier, just opened the world. It just, it's all possible. And everything I, I go forward in now, everything is possible if you just put your mind to it. I know everyone says it and it's the corniest quote, but in, in this VC world, you know, no one's doing it. There are very few people building very cool products. And if you can just be the one to do it and stick to it, you'll probably end up at the top of that echelon. And so Luca really changed my life and really changed my perspective. I've had other people, um, my attorney is one of the people I look up to as he's just a family man and has really great values. And, and most of the people I look up to now, just I look up to them for their values. Um, I think I know I'll continue to be successful. I, I, I'm happy to bet on myself. And um, I think the, the best piece of advice you can give to anyone uh, for, you can get from a mentor is, is bet on yourself and, and believe in you. That's an amazing, amazing ending quote. Um, but we're not ending yet because I really want to know if, you know, if you could encapsulate just as much knowledge into, you know, a couple moments in the crypto markets for a person that's just starting in the markets, they know nothing, they've got zero mm -hmm. in the markets. Where would you suggest they go? Uh, obviously, you're going to say in Volio, but where would you suggest they start? Um, what would you suggest they look out for and try to avoid? There's so many. I yeah. mean, look at FTX. I mean, it's right. just like it's a landmine. Yeah. How can you steer these folks in the right direction? I think the best advice is stay in your own lane and be very careful who you take advice from. Crypto is a space where everyone has a gain from what they're telling you. Um, everyone has their own agenda. And I, I didn't learn from anyone. I have a lot of people ask, who, who, who is your mentor? I didn't have a mentor. No one taught me crypto. I just dove in and figured it out. And when I was confused, I, I looked into it more and more and more and more and more until I understood it. And there's this common thing of everyone's looking for someone to point them in the right direction. You know, I'm always happy to push people to good websites and, and, and call out frauds when, it, when it's needed. Um, but the best advice I could give, stay consistent and learn it yourself. Just because it's working for someone else doesn't mean it'll work for you. And you need to find something that'll work for you. Um, and we're happy to help on Involio. 
Awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Guys, you can check him out on Involio at Cy. And is your Instagram at Cy too? Or is it Cy Watson? At Cy Watson on Instagram as well, guys. As always, I appreciate you guys for coming. In the comment section down below, reach out to us. Let us know what you thought about the podcast. Any other questions? Any further questions? And what did you learn? What What is one takeaway that you can take from today's information and bring with you in the crypto markets? It's certainly going to be an interesting year of 2024. We have a lot of really cool information coming to you guys on the channel. And we'll see you guys on the next video.